uh, as as I was listening and, and watching this whole thing play out, I was glad that Dawn Staley is in the position that she's in. Oh in my, that Angel I love Reese, her. We, I love we her. never heard players actually be, be able to, to stand up. And and I, let's be clear, Angel Reese is playing for a whole ass, to me, a whole ass racist. And still somehow <laughs> has found her voice. But, you know, but again, we 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 go through these to be black in America is, is a complicated thing. Many of us are working with people for people who are absolute outward enemies of our existence. And we show up, we smile, we do the things we need to do. We got to take care of our family and our coin. And we also know that there's a bigger picture. We've always navigated these two places. They call the double consciousness, right? That was, that was, that was what it was called, right? Um, double consciousness is what, is what we are navigating on a regular basis. But now we need to have singular consciousness, which is rooted in humanity. No more double consciousness. Show up as your full self, like Angel, Angel Reese and like, like the right. South Carolina team and Dawn Staley. Dawn Staley don't give a damn. I'm aware somebody else's name, not South Carolina. I'm put Cheney State. I'm wear during a tournament. I'm wearing right. a Cheney That's State right. That's sweatshirt. Right. Yes, I'm going to do that. And because it means something to be black in this space at this time, a black woman, to your point, 866-801-8255. I'm going to play uh, Jay Williams because uh, Keith Oberman has some things to say. And I like him sometimes. Sometimes I don't. He's like, a, um, what, what's that uh, candy bar? Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. He, sometimes he acts like a nut. Sometimes he doesn't. Keith, Keith Oberman's a broken clock. Sometimes he's right. Sometimes he's definitely, I uh, like his uh, active a- uh, advocacy for, for pets, for dogs in particular. But on this but one- But does he you, care you about have... Black women? Does he no, care about Black no, women? No, no, he does not. So look so, what he said. You're going to play it, right? I'm not going to play what he said because I don't want to give rise to it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Jay Williams- Calling okay. him to task. That's okay. what I'm um because I like Jay Williams. He went to I Duke. Do uh he should Jersey he boy. Jersey boy. Yes, Jersey boy lost his career on a motorcycle. Uh, but a, a, as a comment commentator, uh he's holding his own with everybody. And I like that he do- doesn't back down because he doesn't have to, even though even anyway. Let's play Jay Williams Smith. Trash talking is okay, people. Like we, we see it with Patrick Beverly and Austin Reeves, and we applaud it. We we see it with uh, the way Russell Westbrook is being guarded in the playoffs where people sit in the lane and they don't guard them. Yeah, we, we saw that with Caitlin Clark in, uh, against South Carolina, going against Raven Johnson, mm-hmm. wiping away the hands. We've seen Caitlin Clark with the John Cena hand. Now you don't see me. Now you don't. Um, it's part of the game. The thing that bothered me last night is that while Angel Reese is doing it towards the end of the game, we have a, a certain section of people that then want to come out and call people like Angel Reese, who is 20 years old. Now think about this. The narrative that's been following this team all year long, right, has been they're ghetto, they're thugs. Think about what you heard Dawn Staley talk about the other day. She literally made a comment about it. It went viral. We're not head coach of South Carolina, okay, after the loss. We're not bar fighters. We're not thugs. We're not monkeys. We're not street fighters. And today I'm pissed off because instead of, congratulating and celebrating LSU, we're talking about elements of race and double standards. That's So right. when Caitlin Clark is doing all this, she has swag. Um, yep. She's a competitor. Yep. She's lost in the juices. This is what we love. But when Angel Reese does it, and was it maybe a tad bit excessive? No. Did she have been called a T? Sure, if the refs wanted to call her an a T at the end of the game, no. or trash talking because she followed no. Caitlin Clark around. These are the same things that motivates young people in sports. And we applaud it in other directions, but now we want to apply race towards it, or we want to apply, look at her. She's a classless piece of, that's what Dave Portnoy said. I'm putting names on it. Mm, Keith Oberman called her a blanking idiot Mm. on Twitter. What what are we doing? Why why are we, why are we taking it to that level? If you want to criticize it and say, call a tech, fine. Yes. What are we doing? Kevin Powell, what are we doing? You know, if you, I, I, I challenge people out there, Google, type in these words, Larry Bird trash talking, and you will see so much stuff come up about how much of a trash talker Larry Bird was, but no one had anything to say. But if a black player did it, Angel Reese, fast forward, it's a problem. Caitlin Clark clearly is a grifted player. No one's taking that away from her. It ain't taking away from Larry Bird. But if you can't see that this is a racial double standard, like Jay Williams just said, I don't know what to say. I, 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 Listen, I grew up on Keith Olbermann as well, you know, but unfortunately, some 
kinds of white men, didn't say all white men, but certain kinds of white men will show their white maleness when they don't like something that a black person does or says. I remember how certain, you know, like Joe Buck is revered as a great sportscaster. Randy Moss, like many players of the hip hop era, you know, this ain't the era of Joe Lewis. This ain't the era of Joe, Jesse Owens. Since we need to go from Muhammad Ali on, Black athletes, both women and men, all gender identities have said, not only can I play basketball, can I run, can I do all these things, but I'm actually going to let you know how good I am. Because what Muhammad Ali was giving us permission to do was say not only that I am the greatest, but you're not going to silence me anymore. And I'm not just going to fit into this little box of being Jackie Robinson. And I love Jackie Robinson. We know what he represents to the history of our people and to this country. But it, I also believe him being silent and not expressing himself also contributed to him dying so early and going yes. great prematurely because he had to stuff all of that in. And so in the in our community, we express how we feel. I'm this, I'm that. That's the, that's the essence of hip hop. And, you know, we need to understand from Georgetown in the 1980s to LSU and South Carolina in the two, 2020s, you probably have three or four generations of people wrapped into the 50 years of hip hop that we're celebrating now, which means they have watched Lauryn Hill, Latifah, Salt and Pepper, Yo-Yo, Chuck D and Public Enemy, Karis One, Ice cute nwa and you better believe all that energy that had came out of hip-hop is in sports you can't separate the two and so what i saw was someone who was unapologetically black un unapologetically black angel reese and also someone who's unapologetically hip-hop saying you know what we got this ring how you like us now yes uh i know you played uh i wasn't very good but what i was good at was talking people out of their game <laughs> and making them so mad That's that they right. want to swing on me, but then think twice because I'm big as hell. <laughs> and so that that's a tactic. That's you know, tactic. trash talking is part of the game and you're going to figure it out. You're going to learn today and don't let me get off on you because then you'll never have. I, I, I'm that way on the card table. Any place I go, if I beat you, you're going to hear about it. As my father would say, if you don't want to hear my mouth, beat me. 